Hey everybody, I am back to talk about our favorite billionaire family, the Roy family. Today we're going to talk about uh, season four, episode four of Succession called Honeymoon States. So we're going to do seven takeaways, quasi-analysis, review, recap of the show. And then I've got three questions uh, mainly for the next episode, or at least I think we're going to talk about it in the next episode. Uh, let's jump into it. The first thing, the biggest thing that we learned was that Logan had a note with his named successor on it um, in his house. House, Frank found this note in Logan's safe that names Kendall as his successor, but we have no idea when it was written. We don't know 100%. This is a little bit of a conspiracy theory. We don't know 100% that it was Logan who wrote it. We don't know if Logan ever changed his mind about it. Maybe he did it, you know, before the show even started and then everything that happened with Kendall happened. And obviously, uh, maybe he doesn't uh, stand by that anymore or, or he didn't stand by it. To add to that point, there is a debate as to whether... Uh, an underline under Kendall's name is actually an underline, or as Shiv pointed out, maybe Logan is crossing off Kendall's name. Again, to add to the conspiracy, we also don't know that it was Logan who underlined it or crossed off Kendall's name, whichever of the two that you believe it was. Um, and so this is a debate that's going to last I think for the rest of potentially probably for the rest of the season and it's probably going to last in Kendall's mind for the rest of his life as he took a picture of his name with the underline slash cross off on it um, and he has that on his phone and he was looking at it later on in the episode privately debating that question himself. My guess is that it's an underline, but I'd love to hear if you disagree with me and if you think it's a cross off in the comment section down below. The second thing that we learned is that who is Kendall really trying to become? Is he trying to become his dad? Uh, is he trying to follow in the footsteps of Logan? Or is he going to become the Kendall of season one that we saw who did have a heart? Um, I'm, I was a little surprised by this because in this episode, we see Kendall shift gears and try and act much more like his dad, Logan, and pursue actions that at least in Kendall's mind, um, excuse me, that at least in my mind, Kendall would not have previously pursued. Um, so when they're discussing... Um, with Hugo, whether they need to kind of destroy or knock down Logan's uh, legacy in order to help the company, all of the kids are against it when they're all together. Yet towards the end of the episode, we see Kendall tell Hugo to go after his dad without the approval of Roman or Shiv or the other senior executives and to do it anonymously so it's not going to be traced back to him. But it's not just that decision that makes me, uh, that reminds me of Logan. Um, Kendall also uses Hugo's phone call that Hugo had with his daughter about the trades that she made with insider knowledge, um, and he uses that as leverage to blackmail him and get him to do what he wants without any pushback. It's obvious in my mind that the show's trying to portray Kendall as the next Logan, as trying to imitate Logan, as Kendall himself uh, says about the decision to destroy Logan's legacy or harm his legacy. Uh, he says, quote, that is what my dad would do. Yet I personally have a hard time believing that Kendall's going to be able to pull this off and act like Logan. Uh, Logan was a mean-spirited, vicious guy who would, you know, stomp over anyone that he needed to. And I don't think we've seen that from Kendall so far. And I have a hard time believing that he's going to be able to keep up that pattern of behavior to follow after Logan. Um, so I think they're actually setting up um, some kind of epic fall, for, fall from grace for Kendall for him to either backtrack and realize that the road that he's going down, um, it's not going to work out for him. Um, or maybe he's not going to realize that until it's too late. But I don't think he's going to be able to keep this up. Um, the third thing that we learned in this episode, which as my, I said in my last video, it was very clearly going to be the senior executives versus the kids as to who would take over as the interim CEO. The kids ultimately won out, which we will get to in my next point. But what I loved about these, I think there's like two or three of these different scenes where they're all together and they're all hashing out who should be the next interim CEO. And what I love about it is that they all have faults and they all are not afraid to point out the very, very specific reasons why someone should not be the interim CEO. So Jerry, uh, uh, and I can't remember who made you know these comments about each of the characters, but Jerry had already been uh, interim CEO. She had her shot and Logan was souring on her, but she does respond, well, he's not around anymore. Carl, was a corporate legend for what he did back in with cable in the 1990s 
obviously hinting at his age and that his prime has well passed him by. And then Tom, I love this quote. Tom really got it in this episode. Uh, Tom is a quote, clumsy interloper. The only guy who liked you is dead and your ex-wife doesn't even like you. You are fair and squarely effed. Um, and it was, that was either Frank or Carl uh, that said that. So they really can't figure out what to do next and then they come to a compromise solution uh, which as i hinted to before is when the kids win out and the fourth point that i've got for us is that roman and kendall are going to be the co-coo um, on an interim basis they do agree to bring shiv into any major decisions but she's very very skeptical of that plan and she asks them if they're going to screw her and she walks out of that room uh pretty angrily out of out of really both of those scenes uh where they were discussing that um it also seems a little odd to me uh, let me know if you disagree it seems a little odd to me that roman decided to team up with kendall before he teamed up with shiv there was a chance in that scene where the, it was just the three kids and they were discussing uh what was going to happen i feel like there's a chance where roman could have easily supported shiv and said shiv i think you should be uh, the interim ceo and he doesn't do that instead roman says that he should be the uh interim and then he acquiesces to Kendall's wishes of, you know, combining forces together. So they, again, they do promise to keep Shiv in every decision, but this arrangement seems like it's on shaky grounds. And I was mildly surprised that Roman sided more with Kendall than he did with Shiv. Um, the fifth point that I've got, and we're going to stick with Shiv, is that Shiv is pregnant. Um, and so at some point between the last episode and this episode, she got confirmation that she's pregnant. Not even Tom knows. Um, and again, going back into the conspiracy theories, we don't 100% know that Tom is the father. I assume he is. Um, but I have to imagine we can't necessarily take that for granted, can we? Um, I also wonder if, um, you know, everything going on with Shiv, uh, breaking up with Tom and her pregnancy is factoring into her decision of being left out of that interim role because right after we see um, her leave the room with the kids and the executives when they were all together she runs into marcia and and marcia asks is everything okay and shiv says yes but the obvious answer was no and so my, my question is is shiv worried that she's going to be pigeonholed into this role of a mother uh and caretaker when really she wants to continue her career and she wants to be the next ceo uh, it is that like thought going through her mind and she br did bring up um in the conversation with her brothers like allegations of like sexism and um oh yeah you know it's 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 not my role to be you know the the ceo i forget how she phrased it but she she did bring up those concerns um to them and so I think Shiv worries that people are not going to take her seriously as a leader, as the CEO, um, especially when her pregnancy becomes apparent. Um, speak, and then my sixth point, uh, sixth takeaway, let's keep with Shiv and especially with her ex-husband, Tom, who came crawling back desperately to pretty much everyone in this episode, seeing if there was going to be a future for him at the company. Uh, and I loved all of the different responses that the kids gave. And I think um, either Frank or Carl, I get them mixed up, had a really good one too. Um, oh, well, we talked about that one before. But as far as the kids, Kendall said to Tom, I like you, Tom. Good luck. And then he walks away. And that's that's it. Uh, so he's not really giving him a, a, a lending hand there. Roman had a really creative insult, as he always does. I, I've got to, you know, read it off to you. Tommy, Wami, tightrope Tommy, riding the little subtle cycle across Niagara Falls. Tip, Tiptoe uh, Tommy, lip balm Tom, Wom, lubing up his lips to kiss my butt. Um, I, I don't know where the writers come up with that, but that was hilarious. And yeah, Roman's not going to be lending that hand out to Tom either. But my favorite of the three was Shiv's. Um, Tom, you know, goes to Shiv. They're talking, I think, on the staircase. He's sucking up to Shiv, talking about the memories that they've had. But there's there's not much uh, going on there from Shiv's part. Shiv says to Tom, I bet you're worried that you picked the wrong horse you might have picked the dead horse. Um, and, and obviously at the end of that conversation, Tom is left downtrodden um, and 
not in good spirits about his future. I just don't see how Tom gets any traction in the company moving forward unless something with Shiv's pregnancy and, and the child plays into things, which I have no idea how uh, that might work, but I think that's that's Tom's only saving grace to having any kind of uh, meaningful future. The seventh thing uh, that we learned is the Marsha and Carrie drama really went up to the the 10th degree. I did not like watching this. This was tough for me to watch. Carrie comes back hoping to find some kind of piece of paper that uh, she says Logan might have written down, leaving her uh, or, or you know leaving his estate with instructions to give Carrie a house, money, whatever, some kind of assets. Um, but Marsha does not allow her upstairs and has all of her belongings in a bag. And then she says, Marsha says, we're calling Carrie a taxi to take her to the subway so she can go home to her little apartment. It was absolutely brutal. I didn't even like watching it. Um, but in a surprise to me about that scene, Roman has a little bit of a heart and he takes Carrie's side and he says to Marsha, was that really necessary? For someone who loves to insult basically everyone around him, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised to see that uh, from Roman. And I think we can't underestimate uh, Marsha in this episode and in the remaining, you know, six or seven episodes that we have left in terms of, of her power that she has uh, over the assets that she's going to inherit and um, honestly just being really cold-blooded, uh, just being a really tough person to deal with and someone who gets their way quite often. So I think we got to keep an eye on Marsha in some capacity. The eighth, thing, the eighth takeaway that we have is that there was no Matson in this episode, uh, or at least not physically on the screen. There were some phone calls uh, that they had back and forth. The deal is not 100% solidified, but I do think we will know more next week and the kids may actually go fly out to see him, but the election is coming up, so that may not happen. One thing about Matson and with the election coming up that I wanted to point out that I heard in in an interview, I apologize, but one of the actors had said, and I forget who, but one of the actors had said that um, this final season, every day is taking place on one spe specific day. Um, so, you know, it's just one day after the next. And I think, I think that's what we're going to see for the remainder of the series. So if we're like seven days out from the election right now, we're going to get all seven days leading up to the election and maybe election night is going to be the series finale. So I think that's really cool. And I wanted to point that out. Three questions that I've got for the next episode, and I might post more next, uh, later this week if I come up with some more things that I've thought about. But my first question is, is this Matson deal going to fall through? And if so, where do they turn? Where does Waystar turn? And then where is Pierce? where's the Pierce deal in all of this? I would expect her name to be brought up in the next episode. Um, and I was mildly surprised that we didn't hear anything about it in this episode, unless I unless I forgot it. My second question that I have is, is, is Shiv going to tell Tom about this pregnancy? Will she tell someone else? And how is that going to affect her decision making in terms of what what role she wants to take within the company and her future there. Um, and then will that pregnancy, if it's Tom's kid, will that be a saving grace for him in some way? And then my third and last question that I've got right now is, is Kendall really, truly going down to the path of trying to be like Logan? The guy that he despised, the guy that he tried to take down multiple times, the guy he tried to, you know, get uh, criminal investigations on, or he did get criminal investigations going on, um, you know, the company and Logan. Is he really going to try and emulate him, or is he going to have some kind of about, about face, realize he's going down a bad path and, and change his mind? I think and hope it's the latter, but... I'm not sure. There's going to be lots of surprises. Let me know what you think about the video down below. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.